Hey, 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 welcome to another adventure in old code. Well, we have another treat for you today. The one, the only, everyone's favorite guest and mine, my brother Jeff is here joining me and we are going to take a look at one of his all time greatest QBasic achievements, in my opinion anyway. Welcome Jeff. Thanks. Good to be here. Let's check this out. So this is called Raycast.dir. No, Raycaster. Raycaster. Okay. Uh, yes. Now, a Raycaster is how old computer games used to do first person, uh, third person. No, sorry, three-dimensional first-person games. They used Raycasters, and I attempted to make one in Cubasic. You know what? What? Just one second. I got the thing that started it all here. Yes, I got the idea from here. From this book. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Well, that wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. Okay. All right, awesome. So, raycaster.dir. So, I do remember, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a little bit of history first. I was, we were both doing all crazy stuff in QBasic. And, and one day, I don't know if you remember this, but, but we actually, I... I initiated a contest, a 3D contest, to see who could actually create the most 3D-like program. And uh, you accepted, and I thought I was going to win. And somewhere there's a file with my attempt at a 3D thing. <laughs> it may have run some sort of picture or something. But uh, I quickly gave up and conceded to your Raycaster engine. Actually, you're remembering incorrectly, that was not Raycaster. That was an earlier version which did not use Raycasting. Raycaster is the next level. You totally blew up my whole world. <laughs> well, should we look at this? We should look at this. Okay, Raycaster.dir. So we're going to run it, and you take us through it. Okay. So here's what's going on. I believe it's loading the map, which is a bitmap. Ah, there we go. Okay, here's our map. You know, white walls. Yep. The green is trees. Excellent. The, re the red dots are just like things. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, of course, this is a two dimensional uh, map, but it will appear three-dimensional so the dots will look like columns okay the lines right. will look like walls okay so so I'm just gonna start walking and and I want you to have a look at the down in the bottom of the screen where it looks almost like a gate you see that yep yeah it's a dashed line there okay I'm gonna head for that okay oh my goodness Look at this. These are the these are those red these uh, green blobs. Oh, there's a <laughs> there's a red. See that that that's a red dot. That that's excellent. That's a red dot on the screen. Can you go through those green trees? I can go through the green trees. Yes. Okay. okay. See. Oh Behold. yeah. Oh, oh no, there's look at the this. dashed line. Okay. There's the dashed line, and as you can see, the white objects, which in this particular program are just the outer walls they fade as you get farther away that's that's remarkable so I'm turning here I'm just gonna walk along the wall here for a bit now you were able to get that fading effect by just doing multiple shades of gray I'm assuming that's correct this is in screen what is it is it 13? 13, I guess, so it's got lots of shades. So yep. if we 
go right up against the wall you can well I'll go through this there you can see all these shades of gray excellent excellent and they <laughs> fade originally the background was all black but I, I put like a green ground and blue sky but when the background was black it made more sense because then the walls faded into black oh of course yeah but now they should just fade into black with a blue background <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make as much sense, but that's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, screen 13, you had 256 different colors at any given time. So that uh, gave you a few shades of gray. So I'm just trying to walk into this. There was a, there was a, a, nothing happens when I walk into that. Obviously, this is an, un <laughs> obviously, because I made it, it's an incomplete program. <laughs> But uh, if I, I believe if I hit M, I go to the map. Wow. And wow. Some, somewhere on here, there's a dot, and the dot is me. Uh, I can't see it, though. Now, what's, that, what's that, that blue X thing at the top there? I believe that's where I began. We can go and have a look at that. Oh, I see. I actually see the, uh, the dot that is me. Uh-huh. You see that one tree all by itself, surrounded by the brown dots on the left middle. Yes. There's a green dot there. That's me. Oh, you're the the sole green dot. Got yeah. it. Yeah. And you can see above it, there's that box. Yep. I'm gonna head for that first. I'll use that as my as my uh, guide post. Okay. So I'm gonna turn around, turning around, turning around. Okay, so I'm not close enough to see. <laughs> I'm not close enough to see that. Wait, is this it? This might be it. I'm going to hit map again. Uh, yeah, I'm, you're closer. Yeah, okay, so this is this big brown box that exists for no reason in the game. <laughs> okay, so I'm continuing on until we get to. Oh, there's the back wall. Just gonna walk. Oh, oh, and there's the X. There's the X. The yeah, actual Yeah, it's a bunch of you... it's a bunch of columns in the shape of an X. If you had a bird's eye view, like so, you would <laughs> right. see an X. Excellent. Wow. Just this map alone is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I made a program <laughs> just for creating maps. See, this is way more advanced stuff than ever we've we've looked at yet, but that's that's awesome. That is great, but it it doesn't use any extra commands that we wouldn't have already gone through. So awesome. Well, let's take a look at some of the code. All right, I will quit out of this, and you can have at her. <laughs> All right. Okay, so. Before we begin, oh, okay. Ah, uh, map draw, raycast, walk, F, B, L, R, trig, trig. You have an entire subroutine called trig. Yes, that I'm, would strike fear into the hearts of many, many I'm, folks. I'm eager to see what that is because I forget. <laughs> Drawing, map, show, compass, and you used a parameter. Uh, you think I used a parameter. I'm seeing a parameter right there. That doesn't mean I actually used it. <laughs> I didn't, I never used parameters because I didn't. I don't believe I did either. <laughs> I, even though I'm looking at it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we both had the same computer science teacher in high school. Can you tell? <laughs> All right, uh, this is something we had never seen, uh, dynamic, dollar sign dynamic. It looks like it's commented out. Do you recall what this is? I have no idea. Okay, I'm going to hit F1 because I kind of forget to. Uh, that doesn't yeah, work. QBasic appears to forget as well. Yeah, yeah. So if I go here, the dynamic meta key co meta command. So this is a meta command. It's not a command. That's why it's commented out. Uh, technically speaking, the... QBasic will look at these and do something first on the first pass through the code, and then it will start doing the code. 
So this gets done before the code and this, uh, it controls the allocation of dimensioned arrays. Uh, okay, right, right. It, it, it's not important. It makes your arrays use uh, energy, uh, energy, uh, memory more efficiently um, by allowing them to resize instead of be static blocks of memory. Um, anyway, so yeah, that, that helps arrays. Okay, now you have dim shared sine and cosine. What are you doing here? Oh my goodness, I know what this is. See, actually executing the sine and cosine function takes time. Yeah. And that slows the program down. So at the beginning of the program, I believe I simply compute the values of all the sines and cosines from negative 360 degrees to 720 degrees and store them. And then I just use those. And that's an excellent way. I, I'm pretty sure real games <laughs> made by real computer programmers did similar things back in the day. But what I don't get is the, <laughs> is the map dollar sign 18. I have no clue. <laughs> What in the blazes is that? I'll bet I know. I'll bet it's a, it, well, it's a string. It's a string. It's, a, it's an array of strings. So I'll bet it's like rows or columns of your map. I don't know. Okay. Uh, could I just point out here and maybe, like, did you have to go all the way up to 720? Uh, I guess it's, it was easier if you were going to actually use, because they're all cyclical values. I believe in brute force Excellent. Over, act over actually good programming, so <laughs> it might not have been necessary. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, okay, so those are all singles, and that's great. And you have a pot. I'm very sure I have no idea what that is. It's for point, but I can't use point because... <laughs> That's a command, <laughs> so I use pot, of course. <laughs> of course. And the 180 by 180 uh, numbers is the map. Okay, so this is a two-dimensional two dimensional array. Yes, it's a bitmap, essentially. And so each point is going to store a color, is that the idea? That's correct. Awesome. Okay. That's actually a very big array, 180 squared. Well, it's a whole map. Each map, each, each point is a dot. Yeah, that's like 36,400 for, 36, if I uh, <laughs> know what 18 squared is, um, which is 36K, which is a lot of memory in the back in the day. Okay, uh, we got some can go, angle, ray, CX, CY, hits, and size. They're all integers. Very good. And chances are some of them are going to end up not being used. Of course. That's our <laughs> trademark. <laughs> and we have X, Y, rad, and vid. It's perfect. Our random number generator, as always. I don't know what is random in this particular program. Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's anything random. <laughs> well, it's good to have it anyway. <coughs> just, just, just because. Randomizing the timer. Screen 13, and then we're going to draw this map, this awesome map here. Goodness me. So this, um, we have seen the open command. This will read in a file. So you've actually got your, your map in a separate file. Correct. Okay. And we, can we open that? It's going to be... 180 squared numbers. We could do it. Out no, of we, memory. No, we can't. Okay. Well, yeah, I can do something like this. Uh, what was this? Uh, RCT file? I can do something like this and just spit out the last, the last bit of it. These are literally just integers. Yeah, the 15s will be, I believe that's the white walls. Right. Because color 15 is white. And so that is the actual colors of all of your, all of your points. Okay. So what are we doing with this map draw? 
Um, so we've taken a X and a Y. Now that's at the very beginning. At the very, very beginning of this file, you have an X and a Y, but we don't know what it is because we can't open this file. Um, that's kind of silly. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually open this file in, in a real computer. And we're going to do this and we're going to go, what was it, maze? Uh, yes, maze.rct. Uh, I can do this. Here we go. And I'm just going to open it with a text editor. So we see, a, probably can't see that very well. We see a 63 followed by an eight and then a bunch of 15s. Now so, that, that surprises me because I would expect the 15s to be first because they're on the top line. But if you remember about what your input command was, you were inputting X and Y oh. first, and then you were gonna load it. So this is your X value and this is your Y value. And I'm pretty sure that's the X, Y values of your starting point, oh. 63, eight. So, that probably makes sense. Uh, uh, but look, af after collecting all the points into the pont uh, array, yep. we do input <laughs> X and Y again at the end. Now I'm confused. Y you and me both. Okay, so you have a 63A at the top, which kind of made sense. Yeah, the 63 at the bottom. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> it's redundancy. <laughs> okay. I, well. I can't believe I did the same thing twice. That's retarded. Oh, did you... Uh... Yeah, yeah. I've unearthed a few things that you've done. Um, you know, you draw this thing and then you immediately draw a whole other thing right on top of it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. You're, you're, you do that sometimes. Huh. But that's awesome. Um, okay, so you read in your X, Y value, it's your starting value, and then you read in 180 squared values that are gonna be your map. And your, your B is capital because... 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 Yeah. Yep, that's awesome. Okay, so now you have, we have this array, a pont, and it's gonna contain all of our dots. Uh, window screen. Okay. I never I, saw this. Yeah, I forget. I forget what this is. Uh, you know what this does? This, I believe, sets a rectangle on screen, which is actually your screen dimensions. So anything that goes outside this rectangle is actually not going to be drawn. If all arguments are omitted, the view coordinates will be the same as the screen coordinates. Uh, X1, Y1 are a set of single precision numbers that specify the view coordinates. So when we're running the program, you're... Oh, you're going to have to move. It's loading the map. <laughs> it's loading all. There we go. There we go. So your view, the screen is only... It's, it's not the entire screen. Interesting. So I don't know, maybe you were doing that for efficiency. Maybe you, it was too slow to draw the whole screen. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's a mystery. That is a mystery. Okay, I got out of here. There we go. Um, but that's what that does is it sets your screen as a smaller screen. Well, how big is screen 13? Oh, yeah. Isn't Wait a second, it's it's a lot smaller than that. Screen 13 is like 320, 240. I'm redefining the screen, I guess. You're redefining the screen. Maybe. I think you're right. Oh, the optional screen keyword is a detail. A customized coordinate system. You create a customized coordinate system. Okay. Wow. That's how this works. So you are probably more comfortable in screen 12 coordinates, which is 640, 480. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what happened, is that <laughs> I originally made it in screen 12, Yep. switched to screen 13 for all the different colors, 
and didn't want to change any of the code. Excellent. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Um, so that's what that does. And then rad, rad, man. We've seen this before. Um, this calculates the numerical value of a single radian. Pi over 180. Then we do trig. So radians is very important because your cosine and your sine functions, your all your trigonometry in Cubasic uses radians, which is something you learn in grade 12 in the province that we live in. Um, and so it's not as, as um, intuitive to use radians, but uh, that's what you had to do. Trig. Oh, this just... Um, very simple. Yep. Yep. This is calculating your sine and your cosines for all of those crazy values times your radians. So you're converting it to radians, calculating the sine, and you have all your trigonometry done. Perfect. Angle is 270. Huh? That's probably my starting angle. Okay. Facing. Running is 2. Running is 2. That must be my walking speed or something. <laughs> okay. All right. T zero. I, I I vaguely recall this uh, intending for there to be a timer, but I don't know if I okay okay frame skip. Yeah. Wow. This is like serious stuff here. That is. So if we made this really big, it was probably be unplayable. I'm I'm assuming. Well, it would just go way the heck choppier. Okay, let's... It looks awesome. It looks the same. <laughs> okay, I'm going to assume you didn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> All right, awesome. Okay, vid is 8. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Map show. This shows the map. So this draws that awesome map picture by simply looking at the array, iterating over it, and doing a bunch of p-sets. But look at your window screen. You've redefined it back to 32200. <laughs> 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 then you draw the map, then you sleep, and you turn it back to 64350. So that's pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, Okay, okay, great. Uh, things, that's awesome, things. Yes, I believe you're supposed to be collecting things. Oh. I, I believe those red columns okay. were okay. supposed to be uh, collected. But yep. of course, I didn't finish the game. Uh -huh. So things I don't believe will be used. Okay, okay, fair enough. Time one is timer. Like you said, there probably was a timer some point okay so now we get into the game loop we're actually going to do stuff here uh t equals t plus one so t is like our timer frame thing it counts the frames it counts the frames if it's equal to frame script then we're actually going to do the raycast so a bigger number you won't raycast as much you actually did use this huh interesting so i'm sure this raycast thing is going to be crazy yeah, that's, look at. that's where all the meat and potatoes are. Okay, let's let's gloss over that for now. All right. Um, so we could finish. How big is this? It's very small. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's just go through this first. So do this magical thing, raycast, and then reset t equals to zero. So because t is uh, frame skip is five, we're gonna do this every five times through the loop. Uh, can go. I'm assuming if can go is zero, you can't go. Uh, I believe that's correct. I've used my great intellect to deduce that fact. <laughs> Q string equals UK string in key string. Okay. Um, so you take grabbing input from the keyboard. Um, you're not going to wait for anything. So you're, you're just going to grab keyboard input. If there was input, you're going to do it. But if there's not, you're going to keep doing I, i'm wondering could you have 
could we have put this in a do loop until Enki string is not equal to zero? Like, would that have hurt anything? Uh, that probably would have been fine. Well, and I'm wondering if... Uh... Because there's nothing else going on. In fact, it might even look better while you're standing still. Because... That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um... Yeah, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm sitting at <laughs> a... Q on string a... equals... Yeah. Loop until Q... Q... <sighs> I'm sitting at a really awkward angle here. Okay. There we go. Let's see if this makes it better. All right, so we're waiting again for it to load Obviously. The map. But you also have a sleep at some point. There we no, go. No, it shows the map and then it sleeps. Oh, okay. Okay. Huh, I broke it. I'm you, pretty I'm pretty good at breaking things. You appear to have broken the program. Okay. Well, that was that was that was dumb. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my great awesome idea did not work out. Well, okay. Okay. So you can hit some buttons. If you hit M, then you do the map show. That's what we 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 already saw that. If you hit C though, you get a compass. What the oh. heck? What the heck is this compass thing? You're gonna get a circle painted. Um, because your screen is 600 by 350, it's going to be like in the middle and yeah, that makes sense. Looks like you're going to get a circle. Yes. And so. you're going to get your components figured out. Uh, you think that's component? I, I, th I thought it was component. I, it's probably compass. <laughs> The compass is too darn long to write. <laughs> but this is your X component and your Y component. Yeah, of the compass. <laughs> so you're just super, super genius and you had a double meaning. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, we've gone through the trigonometry of figuring out the, um, the X and Y. Um, um, now I forget the word components um in the uh pool pool episode um so you can uh click the link to see that just the description of that so i want to see this awesome thing here we're gonna man if this thing wasn't so slow to load up that would be awesome <laughs> there we are okay so we're going to try the compass. Okay, so I just hit C, so it hasn't even drawn the screen yet. Okay. That means I'm facing due south. Okay, so there we go again. Facing uh, due south. Look at me. I'm turning around a bit. Look at that. Whoa. Look at that. I'm going to go back and point to this X, and it should tell me I'm, you know, I'm due north. There That's we go. That's beautiful. That's awesome. I can't imagine anything more awesome than that. Well... Perhaps if the line did not extend past the bounds of the circle. It... Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure that was an accident that I just decided not to fix. Um, I multiplied them each by each of the angles mm -hmm. by 90. I wonder if I had gone 80. You, you know what? Let's go even smaller. Let's say let's say I did 50. Let's see what happens then. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So hopefully this makes the line bound be bounded within the circle. There. See, that's probably what I was trying to do. <laughs> because real life compasses the line does not go through the circle. <laughs> Excellent. And there there we go. There you go. A like fun, a, a functioning compass. A two decades old problem solved just like that. Okay. Uh, so if you do S, you can actually do the clock. And the time one is a parameter that's passed into clock. You do use this. Amazing. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you are timed in this You're game, timed. if so, you can okay. call it a game. <laughs> so we're locating a point on the screen, and we're printing timer. Now, timer is the current time. It's the number of seconds since the computer turned on or something like that. I, I believe it's the amount of seconds since midnight. Okay, okay. And we're subtracting the T1, whatever you pass in. Which was, a, and T1 was our start time. Was our start time. So that's, that's pretty cool. Next time we run the program, we'll have to hit S to see that. Okay, these are the walks now. Um, eight goes... Eight is your up arrow. Up, up. If you can go, then your X is going to be changed by this, the cosine of your angle you're at times your running speed. And your Y is also changed. Um, yeah, the trigonometry is the way cosines and the screen coordinates work out. Um, subtracting Y values move you up. Um, unless your angle is um, like 270 and you're pointing down, then moving up moves you down. It's a whole... It's a whole thing that nobody else really finds interesting. Well, I I recall the trigonometry in QBasic was was uh, very problematic. Some of my programs just didn't work, and it wasn't my fault. It was it was uh, QBasic just couldn't handle certain uh, certain uses of trigonometry. Interesting. But this program works, so we're okay. Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good here. <laughs> so we won't go into the math why, why this actually works. But rest assured, it works. So pressing 2 you is the same thing except, wait a second, the point 0.5. I already know what this is, but I want you to say it. Well, you go slower backwards. Yeah, see, that's just the thing. It's, it's, it's all over your programs, all these fine details. Like, if I'm going to walk backwards, I'm going to be walking slower than when I walk forwards. Of course I am. Uh, that's beautiful. Okay. Four and six. Oh, that just changes your angle. That's right. It's just turning. And seven is a, like a walk up into the left, I guess. That's exactly what it is. It's a, it's, it's like you're running in a circle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and nine is similarly, the same thing. Uh, we we haven't, we have not seen into the subroutines walk f. Oh, walk you're f. right. I'm just I'm just passing by them. That's not good. I'm sure they're all pretty similar. But walk F, I guess, is walk forwards. I I think it's going to be a bit more complicated than you uh, <laughs> envisioning. No, no, I said similar. Like the, the walk F is going to be similar to oh, the walk I see. B. Okay, okay. So we only have walk forward and... Oh, no, we do have walk L and walk R. One and three. Oh, one and three are, are uh, strafing uh, keys, you could say. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Which is useless in this game, but I added them, of course, anyway. All right, that's our next thing to, to check out. Uh, okay, let's let's look at the walk F. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Okay, your angle plus 25 and your angle minus 25. I know what this is. So you're... Okay. This is all to see... This whole thing exists so that we can see if I can actually go there. Oh. It's, it's scanning yeah. in the direction I'm facing, so angle plus 25 to angle minus 25. Uh -huh. And it's scanning uh, through the angles, through the, this is a, a distance, 1 to 5, so 5 pixels right ahead of me step one to five step two i'm not sure what i was thinking <laughs> well you check one three and five you know why not 
and then CX is well it's it's that new coordinate and then if it's if it's 15 which is white then can go equals 0 so this is just to see this whole thing is just to see if there's a white dot in front of me <laughs> excellent well that's awesome uh yeah, so Ray, I mean, you're plus 25 and you're minus 25. That's sort of casting out a kind of like a wide net. And then you're, you're scanning. Is that kind of the idea? Yes. You're scanning to see if there's a white dot anywhere in there. And, uh, okay, and so that sets your can go variable. That's right. And if you can go, then oh. that's not going to happen. So you're... Oh, see, so this is nice. So if you do find that you can't go because there's a wall there, you exit the sub right away. Um, you, you, you break out. Um, you don't bother checking all the other options. That's correct. Because if you can't go through one brick wall, you can't go through five brick walls. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, and we're back. All right, so that's the walk F. Uh, so I'm guessing the walk B. B, wherever that is, is going to be the same thing. Except now your angle, instead of plus 25 to minus 25, is you're adding 180, which is backwards, directly behind you. And That's then, perfect. And then I'm adding 25 and subtracting 25. Right. But addition and subtraction are commutative. <laughs> yes. But it's it's good. I like it adding 180 plus 25 rather than just adding 205 or something weird like that. Because that, that would be hard. That would be read. very confusing. Um, yeah. Yeah, you must have known that, you know, 20 years later, we'd be going through this code. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, same, everything's the same, same kind of deal. All right, now your walk, you're strafing here. So there is this global, we never really highlighted this, this variable angle. I mean, it is a global variable and it's very important. And so four and six change it and we'll use it in a whole bunch of places. I guess we used it in the compass, right? And in all the turning and walking. Walking. Was it there? Was it there in the walking? No, no. Oh, yeah, there it is. Angle. Yeah, of course. That's that's, oh, yes. that's our starting yeah, point. Yeah, we'll be using... Yeah, angle will be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Every, everything depends on where you're pointing. Right. And so 4 and 6, just changing the angle is actually doing quite a lot um, as a consequence. Okay, uh, walk... Walk, we're, we're up to the strafing ones. Walk left. So walking left. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that's awesome. That, uh, it's, yeah. pretty, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Because um, if 180 is directly behind you, then 90 is directly to the left. And walk right will be angle minus 90. That's probably genius. Genius. Watch it be totally different. Whoops. Ah, oh, what's this? <laughs> yeah. Minus 90. Excellent. Okay, so that's that. That's how you know you can go. But you're... And we see from this that ev everything that's not white we can walk through. So we can walk through the green things, right, the brown things, right, the red right, things, right. everything. It's simply the fact that, that it's a white dot that you can't walk through it. Okay, and so, yeah, you're checking the can go variable after, after all these walk subroutines. Okay, now things get a bit more odd. <laughs> you liked your beeps. Beeps show up a lot in your programs, and unfortunately, DOSBox doesn't do beeps. Well, hold on. We can, we can fix that. <laughs> okay. Play. 
a there. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, for C H Y is int y minus two to int y plus two and chx. Okay, y, x and y are your coordinates. Correct. And so chy is a, from minus two to plus two around your y value. And chx is two to the left and two to the right. So you're You're drawing a little like um, four by four box around your position. I believe it would be a five. Five by five, because zero is a number. And I believe CH stands for check. Check. Because we're going to be checking for something. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, if, now, Pont is our map. If in our map, at any place inside that five by five rectangle surrounding us, is a color that's 12, which is bright red, then, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> then we change it to eight. Now, what color is eight? It's gray. Okay. It's like a dumb, boring gray. And things equal things plus one. So <sighs> this is, see, this game, was intended to be like uh, orienteering. You're, you got a map, you got right. a compass, and you got to find these, these things. <laughs> That's awesome. And when you find it, then you beeped. And and, yes. and today we'll play an A note. Oh my word! Well. Okay, we got to check that out for sure. Um, let's do that right now. So I want to check, I want to press S to see this timer. Um, what was the other thing? The strafing. Strafing, I want to strafe, and then I want to collect the thing. All right. Let's do it, and we're going to... Now, do you print thing anywhere? Well, we'll know by that the fact that we collected it. Yes, it turns gray. Okay, right, yeah. And it'll beep. Okay, I mean, I don't have a numpad, so you're going to have to do it. Okay, I'll play the game. Just as soon as we draw it. Awesome, we're getting there, we're getting there. There we are. Beautiful. Okay. So, we've seen our compass. Yep. And let's see our clock. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Well, if you hit clock again, now you're at 12 yeah. seconds played. That's okay. wonderful. So I'm trying to aim myself toward uh, this, these bright... Uh, Are they the two, the two pixel wide things? I believe so. Okay. So I'm going to go and, and find what is... Now where am I? So you can see me... Yeah, I'm the green dot. Okay, so I'm I'm stuck against the uh, top wall there. So, oh, oh, oh there's oh. one. I see it. I see it. Yes. Now we're gonna go right up to it, and we're gonna hit which which key was it? Five. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> okay, now let's just strafe because. What the heck? Okay. One and three. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that kind of works. And seven and nine did the diagonal. I don't know how well we can see that, though. There, I'm hitting nine, so I'm I'm running forward. So you can see I'm running in a circle, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to hit map again, and now you can see... It's turned gray. It's turned gray. And yes. things things is probably uh, equal to two now. And the thing is, that is just an array that held the value 12. 
and we changed it to eight. So that gets interpreted as a color. And there you go. Okay. Wow. This is, this is, this is a program of hidden gems. Now I'm going to just d demonstrate here something. If we look on the map, see if, see, you can see I'm just south of the, uh, the X there, that green dot. Yep. And if I go south, hold on, I'm going to strafe to the left a few times. Now hold on. I'm already, I'm already facing these trees. So, so I'm going to walk through these trees and I should reach that red dot way down oh, there. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Look, look what happens. What? See, I'm something's gone wrong and I think we're about to find out when we look at the code again. What just happened? So you're totally... my, my direction got changed. Your direction's changed. We'll go back, go back and let's take a look at your compass. It is no longer south. What? Yeah, see, I I recall I can recall this. When you walk through these bushes, <laughs> you you get disoriented. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> that was on purpose. Oh yes, that was on. I mean, you, it'd be difficult to do it by accident. <laughs> I was thinking, boy, what an odd bug! <laughs> oh my word! No, that's very much on purpose. When you walk through the bushes, you get disoriented. That's perfect. See, okay. I'll just demonstrate it once again. Here's the compass. We're pointing. We're pointing north slightly. Uh, east, and then we walk through this bush, and now look, we're pointing. Like... <laughs> and that would be easy enough to do because everything is based on just this one variable angle. That's right. Okay, awesome. Uh, Kate, let's go back to the code, and we'll get. Uh, there was a few more things here I wanted to look at. This is it right here, where it shows where. Okay, because color two That's the green. is green. So if where exactly you are and you're using, you're casting them to an integer. Because, because pont is an integer. Is, it's an, an integer it's a, array. It's, array. it's an array. You can't, you can't give me an array of 4.3. No. So he's casting it. You're casting it to integers. Looking up in the array, if it's two and Q string is not null. So you so if you stand still, you're not going to keep spinning around. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've hit a button while standing in a green thing, <laughs> then your angle is going to increase okay. randomly up to 30 and then decrease randomly up to 60. Okay, this is wrong. Like <laughs> I should have added 30 and then subtracted FNR 60. In... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But I've added a random number from 1 to 30. Right. The intention was to get you anywhere in a plus 30 to minus 30. Now it's, it's more like from a plus 30 to minus 60, yeah. which, is, which is why... The, that effect was actually much more pronounced than I re remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so this should have been this. We'll forgive you, though. I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. If angle is greater than 360, then angle equals angle minus 360. You're just wrapping around because you don't want to, if you keep <coughs> turning in a circle, your angle's not going to, you don't want your angle to go up in the tens of thousands. Or whatever. That's correct. Um, this also tells me you did not need any of your sine or cosine values from 360 up to 720. Well, you haven't seen all the trig yet. Oh, <laughs> okay. You're right. I haven't. We've, uh, we've skipped over the, the, the bulk of the stuff for now. Okay. Uh, less than zero, we're also going to, oh no, you're going to add 360. So you're keeping it within zero to 360 and you're looping until you collect 10 things 
and you step back on the X. <laughs> <laughs> and then you print the time. Like, Look at that. The game is finished. It I, is finished. It's a totally finished game. You could actually have a competition. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not. <laughs> uh, color three is that, that, um, that cyan color of the X. So, okay. That's ridiculously awesome. Uh, let's look at the ray cast. So we've seen all what happens when you hit the button and how to draw the map and all that stuff. But how in the world did you create this three-dimensional wall world thing <laughs> from a map? So let's go to ray cast.